Welcome everyone. My name is Solimar Salas. I'm the Vice President of Content Innovation and Outreach at the Museum of Latin American Art. We welcome you today, Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, to this edition of the MOLA Zoom Project in conversation with the artist Yolanda Gonzalez, where MOLA Chief Curator Gabriela Urtiaga will discuss with the artist her work and career. MOLA also acknowledges the support of the Genesis Inspiration Foundation, the Miller Foundation, Dwight Stewart Youth Fund, and the Arts Council for Long Beach for their constant support for the educational initiatives at the Museum of Latin American Art, and a special thanks to the California Arts Council Arts Exposure Grant. Each chapter of the Mola Zoom project features a conversation between the most remarkable artists from Latin America and Latinx, Latinos, Latinas, across the US and our Mola chief curator. Together, we focus on the series of specific artworks which require a close inspection, a deliberate process of contemplation and exploration, delving into the ideas surrounding the creation of the works their sources of research and inspiration in an effort to immerse ourselves in the world of the artist. In chapter 29 of the MOLA Zoom project, we are joined by multidisciplinary artist Jalanda Gonzalez, who is best known for her reimaginings of abstract and figurative art, where images, ideas, and symbols transport the viewer to a dreamlike world of intimate spaces. Jalanda Gonzalez was born into a family whose artistic heritage dates back to 1877. Her world is one of curiosity, demonstrating her love of people and their surroundings. Gonzalez's travels in different countries, the bonds forged with individuals in those places, and the resulting transformative experiences are reflected in her art and her life. She is known for her strong, bold brush strokes of color and texture, intent on evoking imagination and emotion. Gonzalez studied at the Pasadena Arts Center College of Design after winning a painting competition that awarded her a scholarship to the prestigious school. This led her to self-help graphics, an involvement that lasted for years and resulted in her being sent to Spain and Scotland as a representative for exhibitions in those countries. Over the years, she has exhibited her works in solo and group exhibitions across the United States, throughout Europe, and in South Africa. In 1998, she was an artist in residence in Ginza, Japan, followed by a similar stint in Assisi, Italy during 1999. Among the many museums that have shown her work are the Armand Hammer Museum, the Geffen Contemporary at MOCA, the Japanese American National Museum, and the Diego Rivera Museum in Mexico City. Throughout the years, Gonzalez has taught at Inner, Art, at Inner City Arts, Para los Niños, Plaza de la Raza, Crenshaw Christian Center, MOCA, and Altamed. As we begin this presentation, we encourage you to share your questions and feedback using the chat feature and the Q&A feature, and we'll host a Q&A session at the end. As I mentioned, if you want to listen to this presentation in Spanish, you can select your language in the bottom menu of your screen. Um, let us know if we can help out. And with this, I am handing it over to Gabriela Ortiaga, the MOLA Chief Curator. Thank you, Solimar, and all the MOLA team. Hello, everyone. Bienvenidos a MOLA. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, Yolanda, querida. It's a real honor to have you with us. How are you? Hola, Gabriela, MOLA, um, Solimar, Lourdes. Um, thank you for having me today. I'm really excited. I know some of my friends from New York and from other parts, um, some of my patrons of art are joining us. And so I'm very happy, um, very happy to be here. And I feel your energy. Very excited. Of course. It's, a, it's an amazing moment, not only for you, but also for the museum and all of us, because we are very, very happy because next month, we will open your first retrospective at MOLA, and we are working with you, with your team, and all the MOLA team in all the single details. And I would like to start the conversation about that, uh, to tell us what is your feeling about this fantastic show that we are preparing for more than two years. What does it mean to you in this particular moment, right in your career, Sholly? Well, needless to say, I'm extremely excited. Um, I'm honored and um, very emotional about this exhibition. Um, 
in packing the artwork for the last couple of days and preparing it um, to begin to go to Mola, um, looking at the artwork that I've created you know, 30, 30 some years ago to the present, it's very interesting because I start to see the different um, layers of my soul right before me. Uh, the series that I create are time stamps in my life. And so it's quite wonderful to see these works of art and then to start to imagine what they will look like for this exhibition, uh, this retrospective of 30 some, 30 more, 30 and more years of my life as an artist. This is this is really, really good. And Sholanda, you know, people here in LA love your work. Uh, you are very important in the scene, not also, not only for your uh, aesthetic experience, but also with your commitment with the community. And today we also have a new audience. And I would like to ask you if you can tell us about your beginning as an artist and what are the key ideas that motivate your work, your influences and interests? Well, I think the, um, my first in interest in art uh, was four years old when my sister Alicia uh, received a box of watercolors. And I can distinctly remember the feeling and the excitement looking at that little box of watercolors, uh, the silver tubes, the paper with the colors on them. Uh, I remember just being very excited. And when, as I think back, that was the beginning. That was, um, my yearning to create art. Needless to say, my sister did not lend me her watercolors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, um, I think back, because I was thinking the other day, how far back did this yearning to create art begin? And I would say about four years old. Um, then at about eight years old, my grandmother sat me down to paint. So... As you mentioned earlier, I do come from a family of artists. Um, my great great grandfather from 1877 and my grandmother uh, from the 1920s. And she sat me down to paint an oil painting with her at the age of eight. And I continued to want to create artwork, although there was not very many art um, facilities in my school or classes to be able to create art. Uh, until I went to San Gabriel Mission High School and uh, Dixie Couton, the artist, the, the art teacher, started working with me. And um, she actually um, asked the nuns, it was a Catholic high school, all girl high school, asked the nuns if she could have a, uh, a special class with me. So I had my art class and then I had a side class with her. And she entered me into an uh, art competition. And that's when I won the, um, the scholarship to Art Center. And so uh, my sister Martha and Leo uh, would allow me to stay at their apartment because they lived closer to Art Center. And then they would drive me every Saturday over to Art Center. And when I walked through the doors, I think I was 17 years old, when I walked through the doors of Art Center, I realized that this was home, that mm -hmm. I was an artist, you know. So um, my inspiration, Gabriela, are people. Yeah. Are the love I see through their eyes, are the relationships that I have forged throughout my life with people all over the world and um, who continue to stay in my heart. And um, the beauty of the universe, uh, the still lives, the flowers, so I'm fascinated by life, uh, by the narrative of life in, in several forms. Uh, this is amazing, Sholanda. And, you know, um, I really enjoy to work with you to prepare all the details with uh, your amazing career and 
to share with the idea to share with our audience um, your career and the different important moment of your body of work, uh, I would like to start uh, to put the focus in one of your most famous series that is Metamorphosis. And that is really, really important in your body of work and explore all the variation that you create in dialogue with spiritual ideas and your personal experiences. Could you share with us this fantastic journey through uh, your large scale painting that you have one uh, in your back, right? Yes, I do. We're, we're going to pack it today just to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I a quite apropos background. Um, the metamorphoses are uh, a very interesting and dear series to me. Uh, in 1993, I was chosen by uh, the Japan Foundation, uh, which back then was Tama Life at 21. Um, and they chose me to have a, uh, to participate in a printmaking um, artist in residency and uh, it's Kaichi uh, Tokura. Mm -hmm. and, um, and actually I met some lovely people there, Magda de Jose being one of them. Uh, who actually may be on this um, Zoom and also will be attending uh, the retrospective. She's coming in from, from New York. So it's going to be so incredible to see Magda Sun. So when I was in Japan, I created a series of work um, called the, the Monster Series. And those prints were essentially putting a face on the monsters in our psyche and then seeing the beauty of them. I started to be incredibly interested in black and white and the monochromatic uh, narrative that I was creating in Japan. And when I came when I came home to uh, to Los Angeles, um, it, I came home a little early because a very dear woman in my life, uh, Sela Coffin, who was an incredible writer and uh, the mother of Wolfram Alderson, um, and um, she was uh, she was passing away, and um, and then passed away when I returned shortly um, from Japan. So, um, living in the country of Japan for about six months, and then coming home to to um, the loss and, and of, of of Sela was um, quite traumatic for me. Mm -hmm. uh, living in Japan was a dream. We essentially were given all the supplies. We were given a place to live. We were given a stipend. And then I, I was creating these wonderful relationships with these Japanese artists, with Magda de Jose, who was a Brazilian artist. And we were just creating art. So I was looking at Chicana art, Chicano art, and I realized uh, we've always been associated with color. Uh, the vibrancy of color that is created in our palette as artists. And I thought, what would happen if you took away the color from a Chicana artist, therefore symbolizing mm -hmm. the passing and the death of somebody mm -hmm. very dear to me? So I started to create the Metamorphosis series. And the Metamorphosis series are six feet by six feet. They're rather large. And as I painted them, I started to turn them. So I would turn them and I would see how turning them, they visually continued to have the same narrative, but with a different twist. And mm -hmm. these pieces became very dear to me. And uh, it started with those four and then uh, it, it continued uh, into other uh, sizes and other series and other uh, works. Yeah. Um, I then had an, I had an exhibition at the Japanese American National Museum called Finding Family Stories. And I was able to show a few of these, of these metamorphoses. When I was in Japan, the Japanese uh, uh, government recommended that I put away the Japanese uh, etchings 
and wood blocks and the works that I create after um, my returning from Japan, which is a black and white series. So I did, I put away my art, these pieces for about um, 27 years and I, I did not show them again. Um, years, uh, about four years ago, Altamed uh, was curating an exhibition, uh, building bridges for a traveling show in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And the curator at that time, Julian Bermudez, said, please bring out some works of art that we have never seen. <laughs> at that point, I realized it was time to show the metamorphosis. I brought these pieces out there. It was about 15 pieces. And he and I were overwhelmed by the power of these works of art. They're very intense and they're very powerful. Now, the, gap, the Japanese government... Um, their reasoning behind putting these works of art away was because I was a very young artist. I was 29 years old. Mm -hmm. and they thought that these pieces would be misunderstood and would not be respected in the manner that they should be for a young and upcoming artist. So uh, about 27, 20 some odd years after the metamorphosis have, have appeared and I'm very proud that they're in wonderful collections now mm -hmm. and um, are going to probably be exhibited at MOLA for my retrospective. This is fantastic, Shirley. And of course, uh, these pieces are incredible. And also, I would like to put the focus in another important piece that is part of this series, that is Metamorphosis in Red. And I love the idea of your creative process that you start in black and white, large painting, but the step and step you are putting some color. And I know this particular red color is important for, for you and also the meaning of the color in this piece. Uh, could you explain a little more about your message in this particular painting? Um, at this point in the series, I wanted to bring some life, some, mm -hmm. some life and some warmth into the metamorphosis. And I slowly started to combine color with the black and white. And um, I wanted to portray the beating of the heart and the symbolism behind love and how our heart beats for different people and the manner that it does be for different people. And I'm fascinated with those relationships. So this particular piece talks about we as um, an evolving, uh, feeling, a mourning, a passionate human being. And that's what I was portraying in this particular piece. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shirley. And and then uh, another incredible group of painting are the portrait series, right? And as a Chicana artist, as a research also, you work with a strong conscience and connection with the community, linking with the legacy in tradition and heritage. And, you know, we have now uh, the dream of the painter, a sueño de la pintora that is part of Mola collection. And I would like to, to ask you if you can uh, uh, share with us some of your ideas about the creation, an open conversation of the creation of women artists linking with the surrealist movement and a lot of ideas through this particular painting. The Bisuelo um, series came after the Metamorphosis series. And if you look closely at the Sueño series, you see that the back is, um, is black and white. And then the, the symbolism and the images start to appear in a dreamlike manner. So uh, that is why I call this the Sueño series. The Sueño series um, was created after I got married. And I, I felt that I wanted to convey my awkwardness as mm -hmm. a wife, um, as a person who um, 
was unique in her own manner and not quite comfortable with being um, put in a in a in a position that was not um, it's not my calling. And so the Sueño series came about because I wanted to express those feelings uh, with respect uh, to the um, the uh, the tradition of marriage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the respect for my husband at the time, mm -hmm. and to the respect for um, being a woman who stood in front of a church and created a vow said, and, and made a vow. And I took that very seriously. Um, and I dedicated myself for around 18 years. Um, but it, 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 it wasn't, um, it just wasn't me. I, 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 um, I tried very uh, deeply to fit in. And to be understood. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> interesting enough, um, throughout my life, I worked very hard mm -hmm. to be understood. I've been misunderstood um, ever since I was a very young girl. Um, and I, I have found, um, I have found my place. I'm, I'm an artist, and so this the Sueño series are my dreams and um, the layers of my soul that were allowed to communicate in a fashion that was not a blatant message but a very surreal message of what I was going through. Um, very respectful. I continue to be very respectful to my husband, my ex-husband and, and to um, tradition, but um, it was, um, it was interesting. It was a very interesting and difficult time in my life. Um, yeah. and, and beautiful as well because uh, the sueños were created throughout that. Yeah. And you know, uh, we really love the the connection that people feel immediately with your artwork, with your creation, and also through your artwork, you create an amazing community, right? And I I can feel that working with you for a long, long time for this particular show, but also a lot of people are so excited that we will open your show here at MOLA and they will have the opportunity to enjoy your, your creation. And another fantastic series that we select some of the portraits that you create for your friends, your families, and loved ones, uh, <laughs> is the, the selection that the portrait of Sash, the portrait of Marisa in flower dress that are fantastic, and also Fruta de la Vida. And I would like uh, if you can share with us some of your uh, stories and memories when you were creating these fantastic women. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So the portrait of, of Sage is a um, wonderful uh, commission I received uh, from Minerva Zermino and Enrique Romero uh, of their daughter, their beautiful daughter, Sage Romero. And um, it, was, it was lovely to create her portrait. Sage was, was 15 years old and uh, is still a beautiful, just absolutely beautiful young lady. She's now, I think it's been about 15 years since we created, uh, since I was commissioned to create that portrait. So I went into their home and I took some pictures and they had these wonderful striped curtains and uh, this beautiful vase of, of roses. And then uh, of course the model Sage and her beautiful 
a white dress with pattern and her just the gleam in her eye and the, the youth, the youthfulness of her, of her expression and her being um, was a wonderful portrait. It was a wonderful portrait to create and I'm very excited that it's going to be in the exhibition uh, and um, it's going to be lovely and, and, and in memory of a, a wonderful collector Enrique Romero uh, Sage's uh, father who, who passed a couple years ago, but uh, it's always in our hearts. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. Yes, yeah, Shirley. Portrait of Marisa is in the collection of Altamed and is uh, Marisa Gomez. And Marisa Gomez is, an art, is a model that I painted, uh, created her portrait, my goodness, for probably about 18 years. Mm -hmm. And um, Marisa has posed in, in several different outfits and, and she's a very wonderful model. And she also is a singer. Uh, and is in a band called Ghosts of Echo Park and, and sings absolutely beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, but her persona is just very striking and her hair. And uh, so she'll come in different outfits and pose. <laughs> and she's also going to be in the exhibition uh, in her in Marisa in, in uh, a flamingo dress. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have a, a couple of portraits of Marisa. So I'm so excited. Uh, to exhibit the works of Marisa, my muse. <laughs> and a flor, uh, Fruta and Flor, it's actually Fruta and Flor, Flores and Fruta de la Vida, um, is about life and its uh, beautiful riches throughout mm -hmm. the organic shapes and the organic um, fruits and flowers and the colors that are given to us um, from the earth. And here we have this, this beautiful young lady, and she's similar to one of the ladies in the Sueños. Um, and she has uh, some of that Sueño background as well with the Sueño pattern on her skirt. And uh, she is in the collection of Dolores and Tomas Leal. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm very excited that this piece is being exhibited because Tomas um, came to my studio personally to pick out this piece and uh, Tomas passed away a couple of years ago as well. So I'm very honored uh, to have their works uh, in memory of them and in memory of him in the exhibition. It's beautiful. And how do you navigate the relationship with your models? You spend time in advance before your creation. What is your methodology to create this so personal and particular portrait, right? Yes, yes. Um, the models that, uh, if, for instance, the commission of Sage, my models will sit in front of me and I usually just talk to them a little bit as I prepare, maybe the, you know, the, the camera to take the picture or the, uh, the paint. <laughs> but I'm giving them about 20 minutes because I notice that after about 20 minutes, the model will begin to kind of get comfortable and their, their particular mannerisms will come out. <laughs> and that's what I'm searching for because their mannerisms are who they are. And I try to capture those uh, on the canvas. Mm, interesting. And uh, well, Yolanda, another beautiful painting that we select for this conversation is Sueño en la Espalda de Nuestros Ancestros from 2019. And this piece is like an extension of your values and beliefs. And I would like to know a little more about your artistic practice exploring this beautiful portrait and your approach and connection with the Latino community. This, this painting talks about our ancestors and how we are here um, and the blood and the soul that runs through us is not only ours, but goes back centuries to our ancestors. We carry all of the family traditions. We carry the good, we carry the bad. And 
what I find that is important is to heal mm -hmm. and to continue the family legacy with um, positive energy, with beauty, with love for the generations that continue ahead of us. So this particular piece talks about a young lady sitting on her ancestors' back. Our ancestors who have worked very hard, who have struggled um, to, to come, my parents, like my parents, to come here um, from Mexico. Uh, my father who built a business and who educated all of us. He sent us, there's six of us, sent us all to Catholic school. It was his blood, sweat, and tears, as well as my mother, who have allowed me to be here where I am. And so I will continue for, for the generations that are to follow. So that's what that talks about. It talks about honoring our ancestors and honoring our future generations. It's beautiful. And uh, Yolanda, during the pandemic, you create amazing watercolor, a lot of watercolors uh, in a virtual collaboration with a model, right, Emily? Uh, and I am curious about the connection with her and the creation process during that special and difficult time for all of us. And what does it mean for you, these watercolors and uh, an special collaboration by Zoom, right? Yes, yes. So, you know, the, the pandemic was traumatizing, I think, for everybody on different levels, of course. And I thought that um, I started to find models and artists on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I would sign up as many for as many live drawing sessions as I possibly could. So I had um, uh, cabaret, cabaret couture drawing and they were in England. Um, I had um, Frankie, long haired Frankie and one of her pieces is going to be in the exhibition. And she, I think is in England as well. Uh, and um, Amanda Atchin is here in San Gabriel. And then I ran across um, a model. I saw the drawing first and then I said, what, who is this model? Who is this woman? And because the, draw, the drawing was just so intense. And then I started to search because what people will do is that they tag the model or the drawing session that they have uh, worked through with that particular drawing. And of course, I see Emily Metalskin. Mm -hmm. And so I looked up Emily Metalskin and I just, just was so inspired by her. Mm -hmm. And um, I signed up for the first drawing session with her. And what Emily does is she will take classic paintings and reenact them in, in her own manner. So the first drawing session I had with Emily uh, was, uh, she was reenacting a Caravaggio painting. So mm. she had a shirt and she had these fruits in front of her and her bosom was coming out. And there was just, and I just like, I just fell in love with this woman and her manner of, of uh, posing and her energy. She, I mean, she must have been, uh, she must be reincarnated from one of Toulouse Lautrec's models because this woman is just outrageous. Very similar to Maritza. Maritza, again, another, another reincarnation from a Toulouse Lautrec uh, model. My goodness. So I started to, um, to create these, uh, these works of art. Of, of Emily and and um, and then of all the other art of, of, of all the other models um, and uh, but the first picture we have here mm -hmm. is titled after my sister Martha Isabel and um, so during the pandemic my family um, was very supportive and would bring me groceries. Uh, my brother would bring me groceries, my niece. 
I went through a, a hip replacement and a, a full knee replacement during the pandemic. And um, so my family um, was, was a big part of, of the support also mm -hmm. besides the models. And so this portrait is named after my sister, Magda Isabel. And I know she's, she's, she may be online right now going, what? You know, because <laughs> my family is just, they're so sweet. They're so cute. But um, so I, I, I really love the way we had the model sessions because, you know, I would get up to go make dinner and then I would hear talking, you know, at, because during the break, the models will talk with the people who are drawing. And so I had human interaction mm -hmm. and it was, it was absolutely healing. Um, so I would leave it on. And sometimes I wouldn't even, you know, I'd go take, go lay down a little bit. And then I'd come back and I'd hear them talking. And then, you know, then I'd come back sometimes and the Zoom was completely finished. And of course, I'd find another Zoom session and I'd log in and, and I had a little more company and, and a beautiful model, a beautiful model to draw. It's beautiful. And uh, Sholanda, to, to finalize our conversation for today and open the Q&A session with our audience, I would like to close the analysis of your work with an example of a large sculpture that we are planning to present in our galleries with your ceramics and to see in person in your show. And could you tell us the context of your ceramic and the process of your invention? Yes. So um, these actually are two pieces that uh, it's La Infanta 1 and La Infanta 2. And they are actually in the collection of Natasha and Cheech Marie. Mm -hmm. uh, these are rather small. The, some of the sculptures that are going to be in the exhibition are going to be rather large. As I worked at Inner City Arts um, in about 19, I think 89, 90, I met a ceramic uh, teacher artist named Robert Miller. And Robert said, hey, kiddo, as he always does, hey, kiddo, come on over and why don't you create some ceramics? And so I started to, to create works of art in ceramic. And it just built and built and built. And, and, and I started to create my subjects and my um, images, my portrait images in mm -hmm. these little ceramics. And um, then it grew and it, and it grew and then they became about seven feet tall. Um, <clears throat> I love the beautiful organic feel of the clay. Now don't tell the painting because my painting will get very jealous of the clay process. So I try to keep it, you know, I try to, I try to give them as much attention uh, as I possibly can each medium. But, um, and Robert Miller is, is very kind to, to, Help me with the large sculptures that I'm um, that I've created and, and putting them in, in his kiln, um, and um, always just a wonderful friend. Uh, he is now the professor of ceramics at, at Rio Hondo, which is very amazing. And um, that that conversation of ceramics continues after all of these years still. So yeah, I've been creating, I've been creating ceramics um, for about, you know, about 25, 30 years. Wow, it's beautiful. And I am excited to see the big sculpture here in our galleries that I know that you are working so, so hard to, to create the new pieces. And we are very, very happy and grateful, of course. And Sholi, are you ready to open the Q&A session with Solimar, the VP of Content and Marketing, and the support of uh, the curatorial assistant, Daniel Martinez? <laughs> Absolutely. I think some of my patrons who are going to exhibit in the exhibition may be here as well. And they, yeah, let's see questions. Let's see who's here. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to keep myself um, off screen. So you'll just hear my voice. And so we have actually, you were just talking about her. We have Emily Metalskin left a comment for Yolanda. Um, which is not a question, it's just she wants to send her love and a really big hug to Yolanda and say thank you um, to you for all that you've done for her as an artist and a performer of the arts. 
Oh, thank you, Emily. And I will say, um, when Yolanda participated in the other exhibition that we presented in 2020, Herland 2021, um, we did a workshop with Yolanda and Emily Metalskin um, online. So we've had the pleasure of working with both of them in that context. Is she, is she still here? Let's see, Emily, are you still here? I know she was working today and uh, she's in North Carolina. Maybe she just popped in and popped off. Are you here, Emily? <laughs> let's I'll, start. Let's, let's everybody. I'll, let's, I'll, I'll, let's wait for the chat. Let's see if she can, if she leaves okay. a chat, then. I'll be here. We'll, we'll get to that. And then Daniel, do you want to um, present the other question? Yes. I have one here from uh, Magda de Jose, who says uh, that she worked with you in a printmaking studio in Japan. It would like to know if you still work with woodcut or etching and would like to hear more about how ceramics came into your life. Um, so I... I... I, the interesting thing is when we were in Japan and Magda San, how are you, Magda? I hope, I hope, um, is there any way to pop the people on or we can't do that? Is there any way to show the, the um, particular to? I'm sorry, Yolanda, what do you want to show? Is there any way to have Magda come on the, the screen? If she's okay with that, uh, we are recording this. So this will be in YouTube. Not everybody wants to be recorded and on YouTube forever and ever. Oh, I understand. Okay. So Magda, are you up for it? Let's see. Um, Magda, if you can leave a comment in the chat, if you're okay, I can open up your microphone. So, okay. So um, I, I have not created any printmaking, uh, any woodblock or etching, but I have created silkscreen monoprints at Self-Help Graphics. Um, and um, the interesting part is that when we were in Japan, we were introduced to a process that's called carborundum. And I used the carborundum process on some of my ceramics and it works, it works rather well. And um, I also used some uh, similar technique uh, of wood block, but on ceramics, it is called scrapito. So um, there is that tie-in, definitely. And again, I, I started creating um, ceramics when I was teaching at inner, in inner city arts. And then it just, as you know, Magda, because Magda has a sculpture space in New York City, um, in, um, and it's a wonderful um, wonderful space in New York City, uh, ceramics. And so I was, I, was, uh, I was wondering how she got into ceramics from printmaking, interesting enough. But um, so Magda, the word has it is that she will be attending, uh, coming to the opening, uh, opening weekend of my exhibition. All right, so Magda, Ma Magda's here and Emily Metalskin's here still. So they're all sort of typing um, on the on on our Q and A. So let's see, we have we have about eleven more minutes. So let's see. I'll keep it fast. Keep it. All right. So then Wolfram Alderson has a has a question. Um, so he knows you have exhibited around the world. Her work is deeply rooted in culture. And he's wondering if you can share how you have communicated your work and ideas to various cultures around the world. What is the conversation? Um, your work is universally appealing. How have you experienced and cultivated this? I think, I think having a soul connection with the people that uh, when I'm traveling, uh, the artists in Russia and um, sharing space with them. When we were in Russia, in St. Petersburg, we stayed in the studios of the artists and it was rather cold. And we understood how they lived. And um, I think it is just being sincere with the people that I have met in my travels and sharing their technique and my techniques and having the common 
denominator of having a, a open soul and an open heart as an artist. And by the way, Wolfram, thank you for joining us. Wolfram is um, the Sally Poppins' son. And Wolfram is calling in from Kuwait. So thank you, Wolfram. Thank you for being here. Daniel? All right. I have a question here from Hope Davies, who says, hello, I'm here with my high school Spanish class, and a student would like to know how your time in Japan influenced your art. Bueno, mi tiempo en Japón era, era fabuloso. Y, um, Hold on. We're I'll, say, English I'll say it in English. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I don't we can English. switch. Okay, I, well, do you want to answer in Spanish or English? I'll answer in English. Okay, good. I'm sorry. Um, uh, the, my time in, in Japan um, was absolutely inspiring. And I, I heard so much about the culture. And, and in Japan, <clears throat> when I was a little girl, I couldn't say Yolanda. So I called myself Yaya. And in Japan, they had a little bit of a difficult time calling me Yolanda. And so I thought, let's have them call me Yaya. And so the name Yaya-san appeared. So, hi, Jimmy, much watashi wa Yaya-san, And so it's one of my little favorite sayings. I know Gabriela is probably tired of hearing it. Too uh, <laughs> guy. <laughs> but I, I, um, I had a wonderful time in Japan. It was an incredibly... Um, enlightening experience and um, I li we lived in the country so it was absolutely beautiful Magda and I would open the window in the morning and all the little Japanese kids would come saying hi Magda-san and Yaya-san and it was absolutely beautiful and and I'm I'm, uh, I'm so excited that Magda is going to come see the exhibition because we have a very deep uh, connection And thank you for joining us, by the way, Spanish class. Lo agradezco mucho su tiempo. Gracias. So another question from Patrick Moore. Um, he's read that you've studied and been influenced by German Expressionism. Can you describe how it has and continues to affect your artistic process? Um, I saw an exhibition in... Um, hello there. I saw an exhibition in um, at LACMA, and um, it was a German expressionist. And I walked in, and I sat down, and I began to cry. And I was overwhelmed by the power of, of their works of art. And then it, it occurred to me that the Chicano art movement at that time was very similar to the German expressionists that we were very misunderstood. And we spoke a lot uh, about political, um, political themes, political uh, problems that were going on in our time, what we were dealing with. Um, and so I felt that connection very much with the German expressionist artists and also their strong, bold brushstrokes and um, the movement in their work so I felt a deep connection, a deep connection to them. Love Daniel? that. Uh, I have a question here from Rio Diaz, who says, I'm amazed with how prolific an artist you are. With this well-deserved retrospective, people will get the opportunity to experience the breadth of your work. What would you like to say to your art fans and to the new ones you'll make? I think not and hi Rio. I think not just to Rio is also an artist, a wonderful artist. I think not just to people who admire my work or to other artists, but I think to everybody um, is to be true to who you are and, and what you believe in and what you want to create. Um, be be true to your heart and to your soul. I think that's the biggest um, biggest message that I want to convey with my art and with myself and with my big hair and with my big glasses and with my big earrings and with my polka dots that I wear is, and I'm, 
I have, I'm, I'm so excited that I am I'm the happiest I've ever been in, in my whole life. Hi, Janet Sellers. Oh my goodness. Janet is in Denver, Colorado, Boulder, Colorado. I guess I should be telling where you are. Sorry, Jen. It was welcome. <laughs> All right. And I think so a lot of a lot of love for you, Jolanda. And I'm pretty sure you can take a look. Um, Joan Quinn has also, she's also here and she's a collector of yours. So she's very proud to be part of, of your history, your journey. Um, and Mariana Herrera también has also been a big collector of yours. So uh, everybody just sharing their admiration and love for you. Another yeah. quick question um, that we have is from George Mesa. As one of the premier contemporary Chicana artists, what advice do you have for younger women who want a career in the visual arts? Um, hello, Dr. George. And, and, and really quickly, um, Joan Quinn, is, um, is, a, is an amazing woman. And Joan Quinn commissioned me probably when I was uh, about 27 to create a portrait of her. And Joan Quinn, look her up, has every artist mm -hmm. has created a portrait of Joan. All of the classics, everybody. So I've, I've honored Joan mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to be in your collection. And I think Joan is, we're having one of her, um, Portraits, right? Gabriela? Yes. Portrait of Quinn is going to be in the retrospective, so you'll be able to see that. And Mariana Herrera as well, one of my collectors since I was very young. And um, and then to answer George Mesa's question, um, I think I think it's to focus on as a young woman, you know, we're we're romantic and, and we're, you know, we we love to um, I, as a matter of fact love to, I, I would get unfocused. And so I think it was just to stay focused on the kind of life that you want to build because when we're 20, we never think that we're going to be 58 years old. And, and here I am at 58 years old and it's taken me some time, but I have absolutely created this wonderful dream world for myself to live in. And, and as a child, I promised myself, I must've been six years old, and I said, your adult life will be an absolute dream. And, and it, it absolutely is. So I think it's to follow, to follow your gut and to be true to yourself, to honor yourself, to always allow, um, to have boundaries for people to be respectful to you, no matter what age you are. And I think that allows you to continue to stay focused on your vision and on, on who you want to be and who you are. And George, Thank you for the support um, through the years with the art and, um, and, and for our community too, George. It's a wonderful psychologist. And thank you for what you do for the community. So I'm going to go ahead and we're about to wrap up, but I do want to address at least two questions that we have here. And I'm going to have one that's combined. So Wolfram Alderson he, he, he says that you don't just inspire your patrons, you inspire other artists. Um, do you know if, if, if from, your artists, if from your artist friends, how does this inspire your work, your relationship with other artists? And then we have somebody else that's also asking, Shana Win Winokur, um, if you've ever collaborated with musicians and if you're interested in doing so in the future. Mm -hmm. So they sort of relate to each other. Yes, yes. Um, Firstly, I'm fascinated by anything that is creative and that is art. And I love to see, um, I mean, Rio Diaz, I saw her, she was working on a mural and, and, and they're just the most beautiful murals. And she put these little videos on Instagram and I just was fascinated by watching what she did. And then, you know, other artists that I know, um, you know, Mario Calvano has been helping me here with the, um, with the work. And, and then Wolfram Alderson, you know, your, your Wolfram is in Kuwait doing, creating wood blocks. And, and it's, it's wonderful to see the work he's doing uh, over there. And um, so I am extremely inspired by the artist, uh, Andy, uh, Victoria del Gadillo, yeah. um, to see their works and see what they're creating, 
I just am fascinated. So I'm inspired by all the artists. And, and there is a, there is a um, underlying dialogue, I think, that we intuitively have with each other. And um, the musicians and um, uh, that I know and the teachers, and it's just, I have such a great outlet and a, a great group of artists that we continue to talk and uh, communicate about the society, about what's going on in our universe, and how can we as artists heal this universe? And I am a firm believer that the process of creating art siphons a healing energy into the universe. And it's, an, it's an unknown, it's an unknown energy that cannot be tapped into it. So this makes me very happy to know that we are healing the earth uh, one breath stroke at a time. And then to answer the question about uh, musicians, absolutely, I love musicians, absolutely. I love to come, uh, come collaborate um, and at actually also on another note, um, Mola, we're going to be having a, um, an, a muse an artist painting in the garden. So keep an eye out for that. And I'm hoping that Miss Emily Metz can join us as she could be our model and all our muses. Um, so I'm very excited about this retrospective. I am very honored and I want to, um, my family, my friends, and people who support the arts and creativity to know that this exhibition is, is about you. This is about you. This is about every single thing that you've fed into my life. The kindness of my sisters and my brother, my nieces and my nephew, and my grandnephew and niece, and my parents, Yolanda and Leopoldo Gonzalez. Gracias por todo lo que me has dado. And even though you are on the other dimension, this is for you. My friends who have created, uh, who helped me with artwork, bought artwork, taken me to lunch, who have wiped my tears throughout throughout my life. This is our retrospective. Mm -hmm. Mola, Lourdes, Gabriela, Soli, the team. Muchas gracias. This is going to be an absolutely wonderful adventure. Shirley, you, you are amazing. Thank you for your generosity, for sharing your love, your energy, and your knowledge with all of us. And we are very, very happy that we will have the opportunity to celebrate together uh, your creation here at MOLA. It's an honor for us. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. So the exhibition opens. February 19th till July 30th, you will often see me at the museum. Fantastic. So we have several things coming up. Um, I'm gonna come back on screen. So we have several things coming up. First of all, thank you to everybody that's been with us throughout this uh, program presentation. It's been a pleasure uh, to learn so much and to have the opportunity to, to create that expectation for what's coming over to MOLA. So very excited about that. We will have a very robust education program um, coming up as well, all the way to July 30th. So please keep checking back on the MOLA website for that scheduling um, and sign up as soon as you see that we're doing something with Yolanda uh, or just drop by. MOLA is free on Sundays from 11 to six. So we're always open and just, Come over to MOLA. Um, so with that, I want to officially close this session and webinar. So I'll stop now. And thank you again to everybody.